When it comes to hope, we didn't just pop up and get to where we are. We all have a long road of people, places, and events that brought us to where we are with hope. They are our legacy of hope. My hope legacy starts way back at the beginning of my earliest memories. I believed in hope. I wanted hope to be true. I thought that hope was a great goal and that everyone wanted hope as much as I did. But then life happened and the hope I had started to drain away. The hope that was right there in front of me began to evaporate. And while there were many little things that drained hope slowly out of my life, there is one conversation that just rocked my world and how I looked at hope. My dad and I were watching baseball on our black and white TV that got three channels. On that summer's Saturday afternoon, our Baltimore Orioles were playing against the hated New York Yankees. The Orioles fell behind early and stayed there most of the game. That is, until the Orioles started to catch up to the Yankees. At first, it was one run, then another, and another. And with each run, I started jumping up and down more and more, getting louder and more and more excited with every hit. Eventually, the tying run was on base and the go-ahead run was at the plate. The crowd was on its feet and I was going out of my mind with hope and delight. The Yankees manager called time and slowly walked out to the mound. There was a break in the action, so I turned to my dad to see what he was doing. There he sat in his favorite chair with his favorite cold beverage in hand. He wasn't excited in the least. He just sat there without any expression on his face. Eventually, he brought the cold beverage up to his lips and poured down a long, slow mouthful. I just about became unglued. What's wrong with you, Dad? Why aren't you cheering for the Orioles? Don't you want our home team to win? Don't you care if we beat the hated and evil New York Yankees? He put down his beverage and leaned forward. He stared into my eyes with the look I can still see. Without any emotion, he calmly said the words that have stuck with me all my life. I don't want to be disappointed, so I refuse to hope. Let me say that again so it can sink in. I don't want to be disappointed, so I refuse to hope. For a very long time, those words haunted me. They infected my life and poisoned the idea of hope. The result, I took my dad's words in and made them mine. I tried to live them. I wasn't going to let disappointment in. I wasn't going to hope. My legacy of hope was changed to one of hopelessness. I always knew this lack of hope was only going to make me look at life with sad eyes, creating an empty and doomed life. My default options for life were set to expect nothing but sorrow and loneliness for all my days. I wanted to believe that there was a better way, but it seemed somewhere out there, somewhere over the rainbow, always out of reach. I know that I haven't experienced everything you have. I don't have the same bumps, bruises, or broken bones in life as you do. I know it. I would never claim it. But perhaps my legacy of hope gives me a little bit of credibility with you, that you can trust me. Why do I tell you this? because I want you to know that you've got a friend, someone who's made it out of hopelessness one step at a time, one exciting step forward followed by one discouraging step backward. I want to encourage you along your way towards hope and hopefully pointing out the holes and detours that only slow you down. To start refilling your life with hope, now is the time to act. A new book, Hope is the key living through God's superpower will be available in August. Go to www.checklad.org to learn more and pre-order your copy.